recall what is a matrix a matrix is actually a two dimensional or a rectangular arrangement what do i mean by that a rectangular arrangement or you can say a two dimensional arrangement in the form of horizontal and vertical lines like we will put data inside it in form of horizontal and vertical lines this is actually called a matrix now we will learn about different properties of such matrix look at this data in our previous lectures i have told you how to represent data in a matrix form look here are two friends rekha and swati and they have bought some apples and oranges so rekha has bought three apples and seven oranges while swati has bought four apples and five oranges now you can represent this data like this in a matrix form see it it is represented in the form of horizontal and vertical lines and it is a two dimensional structure or a rectangular structure now every time a matrix may or may not be in a rectangular structure when c look at this if i write data in a vertical table like this where apples cost rupees 10 oranges cost rupees 6 and melons cost rupees 15 then how will i represent this data in a matrix form it will not give me a rectangular arrangement it will give me a vertical arrangement like this so this is also a matrix look at this here i have written the same data but in a horizontal table like this now this data can also be represented in this matrix so that means a matrix can be rectangular it can be vertical and can also be horizontal now the data which we write inside this the numbers or any such data which we are writing inside this all these are known as elements or entries so you saw that we were writing the cost of apples oranges melons and even how many apples rekha and swati bought so all these will actually be known as data or you can say elements or entries inside the matrix so whatever we will write inside the matrix will be known as an entry of the matrix now matrix are actually arrangement of horizontal and vertical lines that means rows and columns in our previous lectures you've learned how rows and columns are attached to matrix so here you can see that we have arranged these numbers in rows and columns you can see that here also here also and here also these are the matrix we had just formed now tell me how many number of rows and number of columns do you see in this matrix matrix number 1 say So first of all, we'll start counting the number of rows. So one, two, three, four, five. So I can see one, two, three, four, and five rows in this matrix. The number of rows here is five. Now, what about the number of columns in this matrix? Can you tell me? Simple, just count one, two. Three, four. So you can see that the number of rows in this matrix are five, and the number of columns in this matrix are four. Similarly, this was like a big matrix. Here, these are very small matrix. Tell me the number of rows and columns of these matrix. Do it by yourself. Well, let's take this one first. Number of rows here is one, two, and number of columns again one and two. right take this one what is the number of row how many rows you can see here one a number of columns again one well no look carefully one two three so here we have just one row but three columns so even like this matrix exist look here how many rows do you see one two three three rows and how many number of columns do you see well only one column so you can see there can be different type of matrices now there are certain properties attached to these matrices what are they we will understand them to know matrices better matrix of 
m number of rows and n number of columns is called a matrix of the order m by n. Well, it may seem to you as m multiplied by n, but actually we will say this as m by n. So what do I do? What do I mean by this actually? Matrix of m number of rows. Just now we have studied how to calculate number of rows and number of columns of a matrix. So let us take an example of this matrix. First of all, tell me what is the number of rows of this matrix? One, two, three. The three rows in this matrix. So if I say this matrix has m number of rows. So m here is how much? Three. If m is the number of rows of this matrix, then this rows, I mean this matrix has three rows. Now, and n number of columns. Now, count the number of columns in this matrix. One, two, three. Again, three. So if n represents the number of columns of this matrix, then what is the value of n here? 3. Right? So, if I get the number of rows and number of columns of a matrix, I will say that a matrix has m by n order. What do you mean by this? See, m here is 3 and n here is also 3. So, I will say that this matrix has the order m by n, that means 3 by 3. So m represents number of rows and n represents number of columns. Always we will define a matrix by its order and always we will write the number of rows first. Like m represents number of rows. So always write this number as number of rows and this number as number of columns. Now, a matrix of order m by n has mn elements. Now that's interesting. Even if without counting the number of entries or elements inside this matrix, if I know that this matrix has 3 by 3 order, even without counting the elements, I can say that 3 into 3, 9. There are 9 elements inside this matrix. Let us check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that means if we know the order of any matrix, we do not have to count the number of elements inside it. We can just multiply the number of rows into number of columns, that is m into n, and we will get mn elements, that is the total number of elements inside a matrix. So just recapitulate, matrix of m number of rows, so m denotes number of rows, and n number of columns, so n denotes number of columns. Always number of rows comes before the number of columns is called a matrix of the order m by n. This is said as m by n and if we know the order of any matrix, we can just multiply the number of rows into number of columns and this will give us the total number of elements inside this matrix. Now, a matrix can be denoted by alphabets, usually capital letters. Like we can give names to the, our matrices so that we can define them. So here we can say that this is matrix A and we usually use capital letters. Well, you can use any random alphabet, A, B, C, P, Q, R, S, T, any one you which you like. Now, this is the same matrix, so it is easy. We will write the order 3 by 3. Now, any element of matrix A appearing in the ith row and the jth column is called the i comma jth element or the i comma jth entry. Now just now we have worked with variables like m and n and you know that m by n means order of the matrix. Now where does this i and j come from? You know about rows and columns of a matrix? Say this is the first row. So let me write just in above them which number of row they belong to. So first row, first row, first row, right? This one, second row. Second row, second row, and this one, third row, third row, third row. You agree with me? Now what about columns? Now this is the first column. So this is first column, first column, first column. This is second column, second column, second column. And this is third column, third column, third column. You agree with me? So here, the numbers I have written here, these are actually representing i and j. Try to understand. 
any element of matrix A appearing in the ith row. Let us take the example of this number, say 9. This belongs to the second row and the third column. So here I will be the second row and J will be the third column. Well, that is so easy to locate. See, if I just give you a matrix and tell you that locate the second Locate the number or locate the entry on the second row and third column. What will you do? Second row, this one, and third column, this one. So you can define a number or define an entry like this. So any element of matrix A, any matrix in the ith row and the jth column. So what you will do? You will just write the row number in the place of i and the column number in the place of j, just what we have done here with all the numbers. This is called the i comma jth element or the i comma jth entry. So what I you can say that 9 is actually 2 comma 3th entry of matrix A. So this is how you define such elements or entries. So let us just recapitulate whatever we have learned today. Matrix of m number of rows and n number of columns is called a matrix of the order m by n. I had just made you clear with what is the order of a matrix. So a matrix of order m by n has m n elements. We also know that if you know the order of a matrix, just without counting the number of elements inside the matrix, you can just multiply the number of rows, that is m, and multiply the number of columns, that is n. So m into n will give you m n. That is actually the total number of elements inside one matrix. Matrix can be denoted by alphabets. That is usually capital letters. You know that. Now, any element of matrix A appearing in the ith row and jth column is called the i comma jth element or the i comma jth entry. Let me just see whether you have learned this or not. You can see that this is a matrix. Tell me what is the i and what is the j for this matrix for 1, for the entry 1. Tell me. Well, here 1 will be represented as i, comma jth entry. i represents the row number and j represents the column number. See, which row does I 1 belong to? 1, 2, to the second row. And which column? 1. So first column itself. So if this is say matrix B, then 1, that is the entry 1, represents 2 comma 1th entry of matrix B. So this is how you define any element inside a matrix.